Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we're drinking Salem's Smoked Porter. Nice. Today we're going to be covering 1988's Maniac Cop. Maniac Cop is directed by William Lustig, who directed the great horror movie that we've already covered, Maniac. Mm hmm. This movie is written by Larry Cohen, who wrote and directed many a uh, great schlocky horror movies. <laughs> it's Alive, The Stuff, and the list goes on oh, and on. Oh yeah, for sure. The ladies man Tom Atkins is in this. He stars in this. How can you go wrong with that already? Bruce Campbell is in this, and Sam Raimi makes a small appearance too. Maniac Cop starts off with this waitress walking home after her shift at some sick seedy bar, <laughs> yeah. gets attacked by a couple of muggers, and she runs away, runs, 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 and finally comes across this cop in the park. He's all in shadows. She's happy to see yeah. him oh, too, please right? Please help, oh thank you, thank you. And this cop just picks her up, right off the ground and breaks her neck and the muggers are like oh yeah it scares them <laughs> and they run off we're introduced to lieutenant mccray and he's investigating the murder scene he's talking to the thugs that saw this and they're like oh man it was a cop man it was a cop that killed her he goes to his superior and he's like yeah i think we might have a killer cop on our hands and superior's like no no! Don't even think about There's that. There's no way! There's <laughs> God! Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> if I stay out to beg and soul. But in the meantime, the killings continue. <laughs> this maniac cop keeps killing, and they realize, oh, we might have a killer cop on our hands. We're introduced to Jack Forrest, who's getting ready to do some overtime. His wife is suspicious of him, and he's walking to work. But he doesn't go to work, he goes to some <laughs> sick motel, right? And she follows him, goes into the room, and he's having an affair. Yeah, with some bunny yeah, cop. Yeah, like, oh, I can explain! So she gets pissed off and storms out. The next day, who do they find dead in a motel? Well, Forrest's wife is dead in the hotel. The same hotel room that she found him in. Honest citizens are getting scared and trigger happy too, right? At the honest cops and they're starting to kill them. Yeah, there's that great scene where that cop knocks on that woman's door. Yeah, Joe blows him away. <laughs> yeah. like, what's a, and it's just like a routine traffic stop yeah. too, like fuck. Forrest is arrested for the murder of his wife and while Lieutenant McCray and that chief a police guy. If you were home, your wife would not have suspected you. Lieutenant McCray starts to realize that it's got to be somebody else, right? You're getting framed for all this shit. And all of that leads McCray into the records department of the building, where he starts to learn a little more about cops who are having these sort of mental problems, mental breakdowns. And he suspects that somebody is leaking information to this maniac cop. And he's starting to suspect that it's this woman who's running the records department. One night he follows her. He runs into the security guard too, who's in Beverly Hills Cop 2. He does actually see the woman from the records department interacting with Maniac Cop. I need you, you need me. Lieutenant McCray confronts the woman in the records department and she actually gets pissed off and starts beating them all up with this crotch. His hand gets all busted up. <laughs> Beats the shit out of Tom Atkins. <laughs> Maniac cop comes in and starts clearing the fucking precinct. He starts killing cops one by one, and that's where we're gonna end the story. If you wanna see what's gonna happen with Forrest, Lieutenant McCray, Records Woman, and even Maniac Cop, keep watching because it'll keep you on the edge of your seat. Did it used to have Maniac Cop on VHS? Yeah, I bought it in a big lot. And the whole lot was moldy. Mm, that's right, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, you did take it a little too far with the open casket viewing and whatnot. <sighs> Justin, come. Say goodbye to the VHS. Good boy. Good boy. Mold. 
twenty-two dollars. It got bald on it. Oh my VHS. First thing we have to say about this movie is it's a fantastic story. Yeah. The story is actually for a kind of horror slasher type movie, pretty interesting and kind of a little convoluted mm -hmm. and like there's a lot of twists and turns and like there's this whole investigation which keeps you intrigued and it's even neat how like all the evidence is always linking to Bruce Campbell's character, Forrest. Like, That's right. Everything leads to him, so it's really well written. Manages to keep you enthralled, and the pacing really helps with that too, right? All the killings mostly happen in the beginning of the movie. Yeah. High body count, early. Then story, mm -hmm. and mystery, and character, Character building, and finding out what's really happening. And then at the end, Again, it ramps. it ramps right up, right? Yeah, yeah. The casting is fantastic for this movie. Tom Atkins, how can you beat Tom Atkins? He's the perfect person to <laughs> cast for the kind of broken down, disgruntled cop. Who heavy of, drinking heavy cop. Heavy drink, doesn't really trust the system anymore. And Bruce Campbell is in this too. He does a fucking great job. Spreading his wings, right? He's yeah. not playing Ash. He's not playing that type of character. It's a bit more dramatic for him. Get to see that he actually can act. Yeah. Pretty damn good. Yeah, he's not camping it up at all in this. It's all serious. Exactly. He plays it serious and does a great job of playing it serious. And Robert Zdarsky as the Maniac Cop. Again, perfect casting. Oh, this yeah. guy is the perfect Maniac Cop. He was diagnosed with chubberism. So basically, like these glands or whatever keep growing in your face and he's got this big kind of face and but it's just perfect. He's perfect for roles like this. The same way where people like Ron Perlman yeah, is perfect yeah. for like monster roles. And the great thing they do with Maniac Cop too is they don't show his face until the end. They That's keep right. him in the shadows. You have no clue what he looks like. You know he's got a big chin and jaw, which is great for Bruce Campbell yeah. being the fall guy. <laughs> That's exactly. Because he's got the big chin, right? So it's really perfect. And when you find out the whole backstory, what happened to Maniac Cop, then they show his face. Mm -hmm. So I love how they save the the revealing of Maniac Cop till the really bitter end. They play that up so good. They keep Maniac Cop in the shadows and they keep it dark. And you're always wondering, who is this? Is it somebody on the force? You don't know that it's maybe somebody that's not on yeah. the force imitating a cop. Or is it a cop? Yeah, you don't know. You don't know because they keep the guy in the shadows. And the setting is great too, just like Maniac, right? It's directed Ooh. by the same director as Maniac. All the locations in this are kind of dark and gritty and seedy. The seedy motel, yeah. seedy bars. Even the police station has a bit of like seediness to it. Like in the morgue, it's like some shitty morgue and a shitty police station. Everything about this is kind of... Ugh. Yeah, it sort of makes you uneasy. Uneasy. Right? The mystery behind this movie is pretty good too. Like the whole investigative side of it that Tom Atkins is doing is really good. It grips you in too, yeah. right? It grips you in more so than the killings. There's all these red herrings that are pointing to different people in the department or maybe outside and he's the one uncovering everything. And you're yeah. always on the edge of your seat because he's going out following up on the leads too, right? Putting himself in danger. The dialogue in this movie is great too. A lot of great little scenes like between Tom Atkins and that sergeant guy yeah, like, yeah. at the bar, like just little interactions which are really good with great dialogue that doesn't seem cheesy, even though it's kind of maniac cop, a cheesy movie, you know? Mm -hmm. But the dialogue is not cheesy whatsoever. Actually, the dialogue, is very realistic yeah. in a movie where it's kind of over the top, right? You get the sense that everybody's real in this. Yeah, everyone right? is real. Everyone seems real. The whole cop aspect of this movie is really cool too. People trust police, policemen. They're gonna come up to you and he just takes them out. Yeah. 
And also the weapons that he uses, right? He's got a full fucking arsenal. And then it gets flipped on its side, right? Where all these killings are happening and suddenly people stop trusting cops. Exactly, yeah. And that's a real life issue too. It's kind of dealing with these real life issues like corrupt cops. Yeah, people over not the top. People not trusting cops. You know, that was still is a thing, mm -hmm. right? Corrupt cops. It's abuse of power, it's right? It's always been a thing and it kind of it deals with that. It touches on it and uses it to build horror. This movie has got tons of evil dead cameos, which is cool. Of course, Bruce Campbell is the main character. Mm -hmm. Sam Raimi has a cameo. And Dan Hicks, who plays Jake in Evil Dead 2, is in this as well. Bobby! Joe! Rory girl! <laughs> I ain't holding your hand. <laughs> <laughs> and this movie has a lot of no way out situations, which is great. Like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of situations in this movie, you're like, how are they getting out? Yeah. You are trapped. There's no fucking way you're getting out of this. And it teases a lot of things, too. This movie teases you in so many places. You know, even with mm -hmm. Bruce Campbell. It teases Bruce Campbell. Everyone knows Bruce Campbell. It teases the first scene with him, they don't show his face until he leaves the room. The kills for this movie are awesome. There's that one kill early on in the beginning where he does a routine traffic stop, taps on the window, and you know, of course, they're trusting of the police. The guy gets out and he pulls his knife out, slashes his throat, and then throws the guy right into the windshield. He's yeah. all super yeah. strong. And just, the guy just flies. Yeah. <laughs> and then all the blood on the windshield. It oh. looks it's a great shot. Stalks that guy and like the guy trips in that wet cement, pushes his face in that wet cement, and it just cuts to like the daytime and it's dry. They're all jackhammering <laughs> the guy out. <laughs> And then, of course, when he takes out the whole police force, it's fantastic. And the music for this movie is awesome, really. Like, they do such a good job. Exactly what you need for a movie like this. It's dark, so you need a lot of low-tone synth. Then at the end, with the awesome finale, that big action-packed finale, mm -hmm. the music gets all, like, kind of more cop-style, action cop chase music. Yeah. So. It really fits every scene perfectly, and it's a perfect 80s synth score. You know? <laughs> exactly. So if you want a movie that combines the slasher genre, the cop genre, and the action genre all in one, Maniac Cop is like the perfect combination yeah. of all those things. It does them all really well. Exactly. It's got Tom Atkins and Bruce oh. Campbell in it. Like, you you can't go wrong. It's They're almost like the B-horror movie dream team. The only complaint I have about this movie is I wish Bruce Campbell and Tom Atkins had more screen time together. Yeah. Right? They yeah. don't interact much. Mm -hmm. They don't act as a team too much. Until next time, keep drinking. Keep drinking.